We're really excited about this next presentation because we have what we would consider one of the thought leaders in the space joining us right now. Mr. Dil Rahulen is the founder and executive chairman and CEO of UAE. Pacific Controls is a global leader in delivering managed energy, asset, and IoT services on the cloud and has pioneered the concept of city-centric management of buildings and infrastructure for sustainability. Mr. Rahulen has more than 30 years of experience as a successful entrepreneur. In addition, he is responsible for the leadership at Pacific Controls and has been instrumental in implementing several state-of-the-art technologies, including, Galaxy, including PCS's Galaxy 2021 platform. Dilk will now be speaking about the next generation of managed services for smart cities. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Dilk. And again, thank you very much for joining us today, Dilk. Thank you, Alex. I uh, sincerely appreciate your introduction. When I hear such introductions, I always say being in the right place at the right time makes things happen. And we just happen to be in, uh, in a geography that is very, very unique. And uh, we now are proud to say that uh, from a perspective of enablement of a smart city, we are way ahead of uh, many other cities in the world. And that's what I would like to showcase in my presentation today. The company that I represent is Pacific Controls. And uh, in terms of a brief introduction, we've been a part of the fabric of innovation in this part of the world, in the Middle East. Uh, in year 2000, this was established to facilitate the concept of converged solutions in the market. And we are proud to say that this has led us to a concept where we today push boundaries in taking the concept of IoT as, and uh, from an introduction perspective, we actually would like to uh, create an air of uh, convergence in terms of what we could define as a smart city because it's a, a very wide definition from a perspective of end-to-end. -end. However, infrastructure-wise, if you talk about managed services, it's all about creating value propositions out of the assets that we actually use on a day-to-day -day basis to improve our lifestyle, conduct business, and facilitate governance in terms of uh, where, which demography you belong to. We do have a whole spread of services. My approach today in this presentation is to highlight the vision that is actually showcased in country of UAE and facilitate examples of what has already been deployed in the market, give you some insights into how we have actually capitalized opportunities to migrate to the cloud on various fronts to facilitate IoT. And now we are actually in a frame where we are aggregating all this, what we already have to facilitate a rollout of smart city from an end-to-end -end perspective. Conceptually, if you look at uh, the, the functions that enable the uh, you know, whole concept of smart city, you have technologies that enable the, uh, the whole process, which basically starts at grassroots level. And then it's imperative that businesses aggregate that value proposition and create and generate a database that will facilitate decision making. And from a perspective, this is all about creating a platform that facilitates to do that. This, uh, this discussion has been in the forefront of various entities. Today, the government in the UAE have actually decided to go forward with the concept of running the whole country on a unified platform. And how that pans out basically is you have the elements of smart city, which facilitates aggregation and information data, then subsequently bringing it into a subsystem format where everything is managed services is brought to a platform which facilitates decision making. And then for subsequent to that, the whole impact of various different stakeholders, participants of business entities and individuals can facilitate an integration between this data that is available to conduct life in our country and facilitate the opportunity to conduct transactions which create an enterprise value proposition on a federated cloud environment to create new revenue models that facilitate lifestyle. So I've said a lot of things in this. So what, what I'm actually going to try and do is to go step by step and look at our vision from a country perspective that actually has been deployed and where we are trying to go in terms of achieving that. The gateway to our country is our airports and that facilitates up to 60 million passengers annually. This very interesting infrastructure is actually being wired to, to the hilt in terms of enabling real-time information that facilitates the complete operations end-to-end. -end. It's uh, in regard to what 
actually happens here. The whole infrastructure is managed using a platform that facilitates seamless transactions when an aircraft actually blocks in and blocks off, facilitates passengers to move in and out of the airport in an SLA that facilitates them to have end-to-end -end service delivery without actually interacting with infrastructure. So seamlessly any passenger coming into Dubai is actually conducted through the process of safe conduct from the aircraft into immigration and into the baggage handling area and subsequently given an opportunity to take exit through any strategic transport that he chooses within a span of less than 15 minutes. And at this point of time today, we overall transact more than 60 million passengers in transit and about 20 million passengers coming in and out of the country. The airport gateway has consolidated itself in terms of having uh, opportunities to expand and scale. So we are now developing one of the world's largest airport infrastructure. This is very, very unique facility where at the end of this development, we would have 400 gates. And today we are managing the whole country's gateway in Dubai, particularly with 100 gates or less than 100 gates. However, in a span of 2020, we would have another 100 gates available in this new world central infrastructure and subsequently 300 gates in the next six years. This is a phenomenal great development where this, literally a whole infrastructure for the airport is being built in uh, an, uh, a land area over 140 square kilometers, facilitating different functionalities, creating value propositions that would enable multiple business operations to take place from convention center to various different formats of airport or air side business free zones. This uh, opportunity has been created with so much of dynamics in terms of creating smart devices, enabling real-time information, facilitating multiple uh, you know, functions, creating value propositions from energy, safety, security, functional transportation, logistics, and everything that you could possibly think of from a grassroots perspective, creating values to enterprise, enabling the decision makers to make spontaneous decisions based on dashboards that are available to them from end to end. The, the next project I would like that's being implemented or already been implemented is a whole concept of national life safety. Every building in Dubai is being actually connected to a command control center which facilitates seamless response to any emergency in any of these buildings. There are over 65,000 buildings that have already been connected. So in case of an emergency, anything from fire to medical emergency, there is a response that is an, under a two-minute SLA facilitating the government to ensure that life safety is top priority and the response is actually integrated to a format where all the physical and the mobile assets of the government are integrated on a unified platform. So when a dispatch takes place, everything from the logistics to ensuring that everything related to GIS are all seamlessly pushed into the mobile asset, facilitating seamless delivery of that service to the closest possible asset that belongs to the government to move to the critical event. So these are uh, functions that have been in, uh, up and running for over past five years, facilitating different government departments to leverage this data, enabling the capability to deliver service that facilitates the concept of smart, enabled, uh, smart and dynamic response to any eventuality that takes place in the country. The next project I would like to actually highlight is uh, infrastructure that hosts the world's richest Horse race is an equestrian facility. It's a campus over 26 square kilometers developed to showcase what Dubai offers in terms of entertainment, sport, and logistics. This got uh, infrastructure that facilitates conventions. Uh, you can see a canopy that's up here in the screen, which is two kilometers long, just to give you a perspective, it, in, enabling P, uh, the whole infrastructure to be managed intermittently because during summer times we do not have any functions taking place in the race course but during winter time it does so in order to maintain this facility it's one of the biggest challenges that it has to be smart enough to sustain itself in terms of its ROI so every drop of water every water of electricity being used actually is to be managed and monitored to the nth level this whole infrastructure is managed and wired to a command control center but facilitates everything from the tunnels that connect to the stables where the richest horses, the, the most expensive horses in the world are actually housed to a concept where when the races are run, the 
the people who witness and participate can literally sit in the balcony of their hotel and view this great event. So phenomenally, this whole technology perspective that has led into the development of the infrastructure has created an opportunity to run this facility from a command control center perspective, facilitating millions of people to witness events. And this is used right through uh, half of the year in terms of not only doing races, but many other strategic events and entertainment are con conducted here. Uh, we do have multiple dashboards that facilitate real-time drilling into the infrastructure to facilitate the whole functionality. From an infrastructure perspective, telcos predominantly play a significant role in our life and in also in governance of a smart city. Both telcos in Dubai have infrastructure that is spread all across the country, tens of thousands of them, but they're all interconnected to POPs, which will enable the seamless delivery of managed services or delivery of voice data services over uh, over their infrastructure. In order to ensure that uptime is maintained, service delivery is maintained, infrastructure is connected to a level where each of these service delivery points are managed, monitored on a cloud. And this is one aspect of ensuring that uptime is 24 by 7, 365 days from all aspects. Um, all across the country and also in the region, such technologies are being deployed in order to facilitate the telcos to deliver seamless service to their customers. All infrastructure today uh, in, encompasses a connectivity to the data centers. And obviously, the data center has predominantly become as critical as an airport or a hospital in terms of our lifestyle today. And in order to maintain and operate the infrastructure of the data centers, technology that facilitates the seamless operation of an end-to-end -end service delivery is now made available. And this is actually managed and monitored 24 by 7 to facilitate services that can be measured and verified as and when clients or stakeholders within the infrastructure utilizes them. And this is all created using devices and tools that aggregate data, bring it out to the platform that facilitates dashboarding, real-time analytics that bring value propositions to a BI. From a city infrastructure perspective, everything related to road transport, sea transport, air transport are integrated to ensure that they individually function to ensure uptime and service delivery based on their infrastructure. And it's interesting to note that when you talk about metro systems, it has got multiple uh, requirements in terms of its ecosystem. It's got everything from drainage pumps all the way to bridges and tunnels and the infrastructure buildings that needs to actually work together in order to s deliver the service model. And in order to ensure that these are coordinated end to end, you create this in a manner where devices push content into the database of a platform, which facilitates this to happen. And this is again another project that actually is running in the country to facilitate the seamless operations of transportation within the whole of the UAE. Uh, we have infrastructures like water, sewer, and electricity, which again are connected. The seaports are connected to a level where data from every aspect, including every container that is lifted out of a ship to when it is dropped, energy consumed, energy generated, and all these functions have been managed and monitored to a level to ensure that there is transparency and dashboarding to create decision making. Large infrastructure developments take place in greenfield perspective, and these are great opportunities for developers to put concepts of command centers to facilitate the development. This is an example of a command center by a company that is actually the largest real estate, one of the largest real estate developers in UAE called MR, which facilitates the operations of its infrastructure through the facility of the command center, seamlessly ensuring that every service that is delivered to the client is managed, monitored, and delivered using the command center. The, one of the largest universities outside the, U, outside the U.S. is actually a campus of King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. It's unique in its manner that it has been certified as platinum green. And in order to ensure that sustainability is the predominant factor, everything inside this campus of 26 square kilometers is managed and monitored to the nth level to facilitate sustainability, consumption pattern studies, ensuring that everything from water, electricity, and services within the, the infrastructure is managed and optimized to uh, ensure that they follow U.S. Green Building Council guidelines of uh, platinum green. Uh, 
Um, dashboarding is one of the predominant things and that actually creates value propositions to every participant in the ecosystem. So every student, every staff member of that faculty of the university actually has the capability to view the functional aspects of what's happening within the framework of that whole ecosystem. Another very interesting opportunity that has been pursued is to ensure that because of the ambient temperatures and dust storms that we have, quality of air and functional requirements within uh, buildings, outside the buildings and in the whole ecosystem are being managed and monitored and actually facilitate the whole concept of determining the value propositions of which is a clean area within the, the whole city. You can actually determine the per particle, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, concepts where you actually determine the, the NOx levels, the SOx levels, the carbon dioxide levels within a defined area or a geofenced area to facilitate alerts. Um, another very important infrastructure is the uh, power and utility infrastructure. To, uh, one of the challenges that utilities face is that when it comes to the field level, there are challenges that facilitate ring main units, which are probably in Dubai, 40,000 in number, to be managed and monitored to ensure that response in case of a last mile failure is responded to. These are all connected through cellular networks, facilitating a command control center to manage and monitor that infrastructure, facilitating response as well as uptime guarantees. Um, the, the whole concept of delivering such services are interconnected to the concept that the service delivery is maintained and managed using SLAs and uptime guarantees by service providers. One of the other areas where Dubai has taken a, a very uh, you know, um, deep dive to ensure that large manufacturers who supply products and solutions into the market have driven themselves to adopt the concept of connected devices. So everything that you see in the market has got the capability to send data about its uptime, its capabilities in ensuring that it has got a part to play in the ecosystem where it is delivered. So the business process and the business uh, in integration into the business intelligence of that business process is maintained using the data that comes out of devices that actually manage the whole infrastructure. So everything from power generation uh, to electrical switch gear, everything related to water treatment, you know, data center infrastructure have value propositions that actually supply into the business process, creating values for that end user. And this is now actually done in a manner where from a device perspective, there is capabilities that are embedded into uh, different types of devices to bring in real-time information about their performance capabilities, uptime, and also create dashboards for every device that is delivering the service. This concept is very unique in terms of our market because there are various challenges where you have the whole demography in very different terrains where different machines are placed in different locations and you really need you know, delivery of service models that can actually ensure uptime and serviceability to the end user. So everything from alternative energy sources to various machines like air compressors, chillers, air handling units, fan coil units are connected to actually create value propositions to facilitate the delivery of services to the end user. And this is quantified and measured using real-time information that comes on board to the platform, facilitating dashboarding up to, up to device level. Uh, we, we do have this spread into the ecosystem of food storage and distribution where the, one of the greatest challenges is to ensure that shelf lives are maintained. So RFID tags create a trigger to enable shelf life value propositions, may ensure that all the food that is distributed and stored within the fraternity is actually uh, based on the concept that it is maintained within the guidelines of what government has ensured it is to be delivered to a public and everything from transporting that food to ensuring that the, the, the trucks are maintained at a particular temperature, it's driven at a certain speed to ensure what that is, what SLAs are maintained by the delivery company and make sure that these values are sustained to, to a, a tangible process which is actually predefined. We have um, um, qu quite a few of these cases where uh, end, end devices predominantly dictate delivery of uh, managed services to the whole country, everything from water treatment, sewer treatment, also uh, alternative energy sources in terms of making sure that they are integrated to the grid. So, uh, and then waste disposal again is another interesting challenge 
So taking all these things into consideration, subsequently we create this value, bringing all this back into an enterprise. And that's the next stage of my presentation, showcasing how this is done. But before that, I have this last slide, which actually shows you an application in the OEM sector, where everything, even in the marine fraternity, is connected to bring about value propositions in terms of its maintainability and its service delivery. Um, the, the vision in terms of how Dubai sees it today is a whole unique approach. And uh, why I say that it is unique is that the definition given by the ruler of Dubai is to make Dubai the happiest city on earth. And this definition has then been transported into an RFP which was floated in January to facilitate the building of the world's first platform that facilitates end-to-end -end service delivery within a country. So today we are actually in a journey by the 2016 timeline, Dubai would have a dashboard that facilitates operational functionality within the country. It doesn't end there. The whole perception about lifestyle in Dubai is to make a person happy that you have to have the end user as a part of this process. So one of the conditions of the RFP that is laid down is to ensure that not only has the country got a dashboard, every stakeholder, every business, every person in the country will have a dashboard. This facilitates seamless integration of the platform that unifies value propositions. And in order to make sure that the value propositions are unified, people can use, uh, uh, use the functions of the, of the platform is guidelines that will determine how data can be shared. And this is the process that the country is going on now, where there is a very clear mandate that will facilitate a guideline and a rule and a law that will give access for data from that individual person who comes to visit the country, who becomes a part of our dashboard. Subsequent to that, you would see that everybody else who's a resident in the country to the businesses that operate in the country. And eventually, these, this platform will facilitate an enterprise federated environment that takes all this data and creates a marketplace. This marketplace will be actually driven by every participant including that individual who visits the country for service delivery using APIs. And these will then enable the functions that facilitate real-time new models of revenue. We look forward to this happening in a timeline of the next 18 to 24 months. And we um, really are excited about this opportunity. We are taking a whole step in a manner where existing data from all those systems that you saw in this presentation are being aggregated. We're not reinventing the wheel, enhanced to deliver the first dashboard that facilitates the enablement of a seamless approach towards viewing what happens in the country from one window. I, I think with this, I have uh, actually come to the end of my presentation, and I really look forward to your response. Yeah, great. That, that's awesome, Dov, and, and thank you very much for a, a wonderful presentation. Um, we did have a couple of questions come in from the audience, and so if you don't mind, I'd love to be able to take a few minutes and just pose those questions and give you a chance to respond. Yes, please go ahead. If I All can, right, I will. Yeah, so, so one of the questions that, that kind of came in is, um, as you look at smart cities and, and you look at Pacific Controls, um, first off, you know, your industry spotlight was spot on because I mean you covered all the assets and all of the different you know points that someone needs to think about um, when they're trying to address a smart city. But someone from the audience actually wrote in and wanted to know, sort of from Pacific Controls um, perspective, can you give a little bit more information on you know your end-to-end -end solutions and and sort of how you're addressing IoT and and M to M today? Um, great question. Great opportunity for me to pitch. Uh, Pacific Controls uh, platform, which actually uh, five years ago we embarked on building. It's called Galaxy 2021, which facilitates seamless integration from device level to the enterprise level. This is actually the capability that Pacific Controls actually is proud of in terms of what service deliveries have been showcased. Now, just to give you an insight into what our capabilities over the past 10 years in Dubai has been, all those projects that I have showcased to you today is actually resident on the Pacific Controls Galaxy 2021 platform. We have been able to do everything from the airport all the way to services in the transportation sector, energy sector, everything to real estate are managed and seamlessly delivered from end-to-end -end perspective on a platform that 
actually facilitates a device cloud at the field level. So we have edge devices that are both uh, software defined machines as well as hardware that actually can be embedded into third party devices or systems pulling up data through our device cloud into a middleware that facilitates multiple analytical tools and capabilities that can actually be customized to the customer requirements and subsequently taken up into the enterprise to deliver dashboards and APIs that can facilitate transactions. This is uh, our platform. Uh, more information is available on our website, pursuitcontrols.net. Yeah, so um, Dilip, I actually had another question come in um, towards the end of your presentation, and, and I really like this one. Um, because you know a lot of what we have been talking about in your presentation was your current installments in the UAE, and, and I think one of the things you know about Pacific Controls is that it is a very powerful platform, and, and the and the technology is very strong, and and I you know your team has worked very hard to develop it, and one of the things that we are, we are curious to know, and the audience is curious to know, is um, you know. Can, can you talk to a little bit about the progress around, you know, what's what's going on around the world um, and, and sort of more specifically uh, the the, the uh, person who uh, entered the question said, you know, what's going on in Europe and North America and kind of what's the progress that's happening with IoT and, and, and kind of from your perspective, um, elaborate on that? Uh, I have two viewpoints on this. Uh, Pursuit Controls uh, as a company has established presence in North America and has strategically partnered with uh, Jones Lang LaSalle to offer the services within that country. We see very little competition in the space where we are talking about managed services on the cloud, where you could literally facilitate connectivity of buildings and de uh, devices onto an enterprise cloud, facilitating seamless response to manage infrastructure from a whole different perspective than it is managed today. Europe too, we see, uh, we have not positioned ourselves into Europe, but currently our business spectrum allows us to partner with telcos we go to market using telco infrastructure and manage our business models but we do see there are a lot of effort and incentives made by the european union to encourage investors as well as large institutions to participate in a concept where they look at country management city management from uh, from a cloud deployment perspective so basically iot is changing the way things are being looked at Traditionally, IoT has never been the driving force. Today, we see everything from uh, functional mechanical electrical engineering equipment to everything that happens in all fraternities and all verticals, including healthcare, hospitality, governance, and people, and ultimately, it's the end user. So my call on this is that this transformation has happened so quickly, you can see that the whole world has now directed its vision onto IoT in various forms, uh, in every angle where you actually see people now utilizing the infrastructure that has been laid out using it, uh, using the connectivity and the social media to enable lifestyle. And this whole change in transformation in lifestyle actually happens purely by one single fact that the definition of the enterprise is transformed into the individual. Today, the enterprise is the individual. He uses his tools or his gateway or his HMI or his phone to facilitate a whole ecosystem in interacting with everything around him and the services delivered by governance. So this is now going to be a whole different outlook. What we traditionally saw as business models and revenue streams is going to dramatically change where people will dictate usage, people will dictate lifestyle based on their current requirements and their appetite and ultimately I think we are dealing with billions of transactions not only from machines but also people who will interact and participate and uh, again we are looking at a whole new revolutionary revolutionary approach in how this would transform because if we are having a country that facilitates every individual coming in and participating in the database that's provided by the country whether he's a visitor or a resident it's a whole different dynamics and uh, I think the world has to get prepared with it because if you see the first movers taking advantage of that, the global focus because of connectivity and the whole regime of how you're able to focus on virtual business will transform how business and governance is conducted in the future. Great. 
That, that's very helpful, Bill, and uh, appreciate your insight. And now we have one last question for you that came in. Um, so the, the question that Mark had was kind of how important are ecosystems and open systems uh, for the adoption of IoT? In fact, that's a phenomenal question. The answer is that that's the significant approach that government and any decision maker would take is to create the opportunity for open systems to be part of lifestyle governance and infrastructure. The, the, the future of all connectivity and data and analytics and platforms are to allow third party systems that are totally open to facilitate integration of data. We in our platform have vision the fact that in the future open source would be predominantly the way the world will move in applications and it is paramount that we, the world accepts this and facilitates people to use applications that are open in whichever way they please. Now this is now challenged by the fact that you have issues relating to security and functional governance. This is the whole new role that is actually being rolled out where definitions, governance would come into play. Today we have no stringent rules that dictate globally how data can be shared and used and governed. We do not have adequate security to facilitate this to happen. These two are actually boundaries that mankind will push to enable the lifestyle change brought about by IoT. So thank you very much uh, for your presentation today. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this keynote. Um, again, Pacific Controls is a global leader in delivering managed energy and asset and IoT services. And we really think that you all have pioneered the concept of city-centric management of buildings and infrastructure for sustainability. And, and again, Bill, that was a fantastic presentation. And thank you for fielding the questions from the audience. And we look forward to having you join us in future events. I invite everybody to come and visit us in Dubai so we can showcase this to you live. Thank you very much, sir.